In this video, I'd like to talk about the end behavior of polynomials. And essentially what this topic is looking at is when we have some polynomial, the question becomes what happens as the x values get very, very large or very, very negative? What happens to the graph? Now to answer those questions, what we first need to look at are what we call the parent functions to polynomials. So let's make some space and look at these coordinate planes I've drawn here. And we're going to look at several different examples. So what I mean by a parent function, that is the simplest polynomials that we can make. For instance, we can look at y is equal to x squared. This is the simplest parabola or quadratic function that we can draw. Whereas we can also look at y is equal to x to the third power. And basically, we're going to look at x to all of these different powers and see if we can draw any conclusions or notice any patterns. So we'll, we'll also look at y is equal to x to the fourth power. And lastly, we'll look at y is equal to x to the fifth power. And from looking at these four, we'll be able to draw a generalization or a conclusion and notice patterns that basically all of the even power parent functions of these polynomials, they all look very similar. And likewise, all of the polynomials to an odd power look very similar, at least for these parent functions. So let's start with y is equal to x squared. So our first step to get a picture of this function is to make a quick table. And we won't do this for all of them, just for this first one, so you get the general idea. So we're going to pick values for x and see what their y values are by just plugging them in. So let's start with negative 2. When you square a negative number, you're multiplying it by itself, so the negatives cancel. So you get positive 4 here. Minus 1 squared is 1. 0 squared is 0. 1 squared is 1. And 2 squared is 4. And now we can plot these points. So you have 0, 0, 1, 1. We have 2 comma 4, we have negative 1, 1, and negative 2, comma 4. And then let me quickly draw that curve in. And so we can at least get a rough idea of what this looks like. Of course, drawing this by hand, you're always going to have a little bit of inaccuracy. But if you want to completely understand this or get a perfect picture, you can throw this into a graphing calculator. Now going on to our cubic function here. We'll do the same thing. We're just going to plug in different x values. In fact, we'll just look at the same ones and see what their y values are. So when we plug in 0, we get 0. When we plug in 1, we get 1. And 2 to the third is 8. And let's see, this goes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So 7, 8 would be somewhere right there. And now when we plug in negative numbers, we're multiplying them three times. So two of them will cancel out and become positive, but there will always be one left over that brings the value back to a negative number. So minus one multiplied three times is negative one. And likewise, minus two multiplied three times is negative eight. So that will be somewhere probably down here. And now we can draw in this curve. So our cubic looks roughly like this, but again, I encourage you throw this into a graphing calculator. And it's very similar to our quadratic here. It's just for the negative values, when it's raised to an odd power, they're reflected down below and the y values are negative. Whereas for when the degree is even, the negative values will become positive. And so when we draw this quartic function here, this yellow one, it's gonna look very similar to our quadratic. So again, for this one, we could make a table. We have, when we plug in 0, we get 0. 1, we still get 1. And when we plug in negative 1, now we're multiplying it 4 times, so we can pair 2 and 2, and so that they all cancel out and become positive. So negative 1 will give us a y value of 1. Now the values of 2 and negative 2 are going to be 16. So that's going to be way above our graph. And so I'm just going to draw a rough picture of what that might look like. And what you can see is that this yellow curve here, this quartic polynomial, this parent function for the quartic, is very similar to the parabola. The only difference is that it's much steeper. But the same shape 
essentially applies. And we can now look at this fifth degree parent function for a polynomial. And what we'll see is it, it's going to look just like the cubic because when we plug in negative numbers, raising them to the fifth power, like let's say negative one to the fifth power, you're going to have five of them multiplied together. And there's always going to be one left over. So we're able to pair up two there, two there. And so these will become positive. But then we're going to take a positive number and multiply it by a negative number. And so the end result is negative 1. So every negative number we put in here will have a negative value. So let's try and plot these points very quickly. And so it goes through at 0, 0, at 1, 1, at negative 1, negative 1. Now when we plug in 2, 2 to the fifth power is 32. So that's going to be way up here. And negative 2 will give you negative 32. So that would be way down there. So it's going to look just like the cubic, except it'll be much steeper. And the key takeaway is that when it's to an odd power, that they're going to look very similar. So the cubic and the fifth degree parent functions for polynomials look roughly the same. It's just the higher the degree, the skinnier it gets, or essentially the steeper it gets. So it'll get closer and closer to this y-axis as the degree increases. And likewise, for an even degree polynomial, they're all going to look pretty much like a parabola, but the higher the power, the steeper it gets, the closer this function will get towards that y-axis. So we can make a generalization that when you have, let me change colors here, y equals x to some even power, that it's going to look like the parabola. And so I'll just draw a very rough shape here. So that will look like a parabola. And the higher the power, the steeper it will get. And likewise, when we have y equals x to some odd power, it's going to look pretty much like a cubic, except the higher the power there, the steeper it will get. So this, again, is a very rough picture but you'll get the general idea.